Okay, good morning. Uh, my name is Miguel Lagunas. I'm giving this presentation and the other authors, and I have Nate and Mark Martinez. The title is, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the title is Adaptive Function Approximation uh, based on the DCT, the Discrete Design Transform. The motivation was, uh, during a long time, I was fascinated by the mapping theorem of Kolmogorov. And, and mostly, this uh, first set of functions that do, do, do not depend on the application, single variable, which are used to mapping multiple functions. As you know, in neural networks, uh, the, uh, the theorem of Andrei Kolmogorov was not used, claiming that the perceptron was not uh, similar or not the same, but the functions in the hidden layer uh, uh, Andre descri described. So I was working in one alternative for uh, for the approximations of these functions, and one of the things I discover or I, I we find out is that making adaptive, I mean me making the nonlinear function depending on the application and self-designing. Uh, the performance of the of the perfection improves a lot. So uh, today I'm going to present you which is the model, which is very basic, uh, basic in linear systems, as well as the use of the basic uh, LMS or the gradient algorithm for uh, supervised learn learning for this model. Who's next? Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Basically, from the beginning, uh, the classical polynomial model for nonlinearities can be understood in that manner. I don't say this is the formal way to do it, but it's just to, to explain it uh, in a different manner. You take the inverse Fourier transform of any function uh, of x, then you take the approximation into in the Taylor series of the exponential, you get this expression, and then you, at the end you arrive to a polynomial model. Of course, uh, the system using polynomial approximation that didn't use this this way, because the quality of the approximation, as you know, is concentrated in a single point. But of course, what is important is from this uh, simple proof, you get the idea that the polynomial approximation architecture is, is, is valid. What is the problem of the, uh, and of course, uh, making the disapproximation has a uniform quality in the, in the, in the range of, of interest is, uh, can, be, can be done. So you can apply a minimum square error for the CN, and then the fit will be overall the interval. So this is just the way to solve it. Of course, if you go back to the initial point, you can, Let's, let's come on to the difficulties. One of the problems of this kernel of polynomial approximation is that the functions, the basic kernel, is not bounded. So you have to bound it by yourself and, of course, to control this. And, of course, in any circuit or implementation, digital or analog, having unbounded functions is complicated. And, and not only complicated, but also risky. Also, uh, of course, because the function is bounded, you have to, uh, to limit uh, at the end of the nonlinear function, which you are using this function between 1 and minus 1, you have to step the late. And usually in this point, the function is not continuous, so that creates some problems. So during many years, uh, polynomial approximation, even when I was a student, we used it with analog uh, circuits in electronics, uh, was was the traditional one, but uh, at the end, it doesn't 
my opinion, has been quite successful in, in applications. What we did is the, is the opposite, is going back to the origin, and I say, why not? I can approximate this by a fin finite Fuji series. Of course, uh, doing this is making discrete the function, and then the function you are modeling is not the nonlinear function, but just a periodic approximation. This creates a lot of uh, harmonics due to this discontinuity. So if you do directly the Fourier approximation, the number of coefficients will, will be very big. Uh, the problem with discontinuity, you know that uh, uh, any discontinuity in the first function, in the second, in the first derivative, second derivative, is increasing the number of side rows. So you have to uh, use the approximation to promote the most continuous approximation. And that's what we do with the DCT. In DCT, this is the function we want to, uh, to use. This is the extrapolation in the three methods. You see, in that way, even for odd functions, or even functions, I'm sorry, for odd, you see the discontinuity here is very elevated. So uh, the number of coefficients you will need in the approximation using cosines will be much lower. And that is the magic of the discrete uh, discrete cosine, uh, cosine transform. <coughs> this is the expressions of the of the discrete cosine transform. There are several alternatives. I think last year was the centenary, right? Hundred years that uh, this city was discovered. Uh, you see, the uh, the functions are real, are fully bounded, so are uh, is implementable. And in fact, uh, this idea of uh, extrapolating with the mirroring the image was the key magic of DCT for the image coding. In order to remove the effect, so the overlapping effect between the images in JPEG were eight by eight. So uh, you had to put one image after coding together with another image. So you had border effects. The only one which removed these effects and produced the magic of uh, the digital systems was the DCT. Today is in all the standards. Um, so this is the formula. You see the functions are real and bounded magnitude. So it's always within one and minus one. They are suitable for communication. In fact, we, we use these ideas to add uh, the satellite the IoT. Uh, was uh, to use the so-called idea of computing while transmitting. In other words, uh, you transmit the data, the data X, but at the same time with several carriers, you make any computation to the receiver, so the receiver has no operation. This is the two papers based on this idea, the CD based their interface design for function computation. Uh, the system is LoRa, LoRa is the uh, standard for IoT transmission, and LoRa is using this function. So the parameter in LoRa is X, and is uh, transmitted inside the phase of the frequency of a single car. You see, to give you an idea, this is a nonlinear logarithmic compounder. Uh, if we extrapolate using the DCT, you see the number of coefficients is almost five. If you use uh, Volterra or other polynomials, the, the number is higher. The approximation here is super imposed. This is the error between the DCT model and the original logarithmic compounder, very small. And this is the, you see the, these harmonics, the harmonics which are one, three, five, are, are zero for these functions using the DCT. So only five or six. In fact, I use it for neural networks, and the number, uh, the order of the nonlinearity was as much as six, and most of, most of the case was three coefficients only. Uh, just to make it adaptive, there is another advantage of uh, using these functions, the cosine functions. You see, this is the snapshot. You can represent the the output of the nonlinear system using this vector formulation, so it's the coefficients vector multiplied by 
he has an upshot. And because he has an upshot, it's cosines. You see, the matrix, the covariance matrix of the snapshot is the average. In fact, you see, this is the, the matrix four by four of diagonal elements in theory are zero. You see, are zero, 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 zero. And the diagonal has to be 0 0.5. This makes the application of the LMS incredibly fast and precise for the systems where the kernel are orthogonals. That was not the case again in the polynomial approximation. For example, the computation of the convergence time, this is the, here, the mu is 2 alpha divided by the power of the snapshot. You see in other applications, even in linear process, this power has to be estimated online. In that case, we know a priori, the arc science power is 0 0.5. Uh, this is the convergence times. This is the minimum eigenvalue of the covariance. But because the eigenvalues are identical, equal to 0, 0.5, you can get this expression, which is more precise. And at the end, for a small alpha, is the misadjustment. Misadjustment is the error that you are having at the output of the perceptron for or because or due to make an adaptive to the nonlinear non -linear function. You say this value in practice used to be 1%, 0 0.01, maximum 0 0.1. Otherwise, the algorithm is very nervous. Of course, the convergence time, as you see in this formula, in this formula, if you make the misadjustment, the sex of error, uh, very small, you enlarge the time, the time for conversion. Any time, anyway, you will see the time of conversion, but for this nonlinear system is nothing compared with the time you use to teach any neural network. See the difference? This is for a misadjustment of 1%, this is 10%. Of course, in 10%, the, the convergence is very fast. This is the theoretical number over the, the learning curve. This is the theoretical number. So, so you see it's quite precise, the estimation of the convergence time. The approximation is good. Even if you go to other functions, uh, this is the case. You see this very nervous algorithm, a very high misadjustment, and in satellite communication, they call it error budget. So you can make anything adaptive whenever the misadjustment then pass over the, uh, the error budget. This is uh, very small, you see the value of this zone and this zone. In this case, the scale, the value is 6.12, in that case, the error is lower. This is the approximation for the square of the, of the input, and this is the square root. As you see the quality, of, this is the error between the, the adaptive version and the theoretical version. It's very, very small, even for that case. And that's all. Just to show you, uh, to recall is a new model for nonlinear function, uh, single dimension, kernels are burned, are orthogonal, and can be implemented with voltage control or oscillator in analog or in digital in any, see, without any problem. It's a periodic extrapolation. Because the extrapolation of the nonlinear function is periodic, you can provoke eight banks in the response of the perceptron. Uh, a full adaptive control, perfect control of convergence time and misadjustment at the trade which is between these two. Suitable for computing while transmitting, as I mentioned it. And uh, what we are doing now is using this for enabled perception close to one d functions in the Commodore mapping. This is a, it's a feed forward single hidden layer. Uh, use of these nonlinear functions in traditional perception. That's very good. And that's all. Thank you very much for your attention. Yes, sir.